shall see his face when I'm finished down here I shall thank you Lord
To God be the glory for the great things he has done. Don't we serve an awesome God? Do we serve a magnificent God? For God is truly great and he is greatly to be praised. If you're blessed and you know it and glad to be here, put your hands together. Amen, somebody. We thank God for those who have tuned in with us on this morning by way of Facebook, those who will watch us on our YouTube channel. God bless you. We pray this would be an edifying experience. We ask that you like, heart, comment, and share this worship experience. If it's good to you, let somebody else know it's good. Amen? And you all, before we start, I pray that we can open our hearts and our mind, if we will, and draw in our minds and prepare our minds for worship. Whatever you have going on, listen, put it on hold and block out this next hour and 15 minutes and reserve space in your heart and your mind for the worship and praise of our God. For we want to have our mind stayed on him. Amen, somebody. And I pray right now, Father, that any distractions of the enemy cancel that assignment right now in Jesus name whatever people are confronted with what they are facing father we turn our face to you right now and we reserve this space for praise and worship oh God for you oh God because you deserve our praise we deserve our worship oh God we will not allow our praise to be suppressed oh God but we will lift up our voices to you oh God and we pray that when we give you this offering, you will accept it in Jesus' name. Amen. This is our call to worship. Psalms 95. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with song. For the Lord is a great God. A great king above all gods. In his hands are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his. And he made it. And his hands formed the dry land. Oh come. Let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture. And is there anybody in the house know that you belong to God and God belongs to you? Let's tell the Lord, say, Lord, I belong to you. And this praise is for you. Lord, be pleased with this praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you worship, oh God. We adore your holy and high name. Father, we pray right now as we go forth in this worship, you'll get the glory in Jesus' name. Receive our deacons, you all, as they come with scripture, and then they will come with prayer. Once they have read the scripture, you may take your seat. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. To God be the glory. This morning's scripture I'll be reading, dear to my heart, it's one of my grandmother's favorites. It reads, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy, and gathered them out of the lands from the east, and from the west, and from the north, and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in the solidarity way they found no city to dwell in hungry and thirsty their souls fainted in them 
Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distress. And he let them forth, he led them forth by the right way, and they might go to the city of the habitation. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works and to the children of men. I read you eight verses of the 107 Psalms. May it be a blessing on the reader and the hearer and the doers of these words. Hey, close your eyes, bow your heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come here knowing you, God, you created this earth, this world, and everything in it. We know you got all power and you can do all things. And we just come here thankful. Thankful for this day. Thankful for this opportunity to come here and worship your name. Lord, we love you. And as you do so much for us, we thank you for your grace, your mercy. We thank you for the blessings that you have put in our, in our lives. God, you do us everything for us. We know you love us. You allow your son to come on this earth to die for our sins so we can have an opportunity for eternal life, Lord. We just thank you. We're thankful for this waking up this morning. We're just thankful for you being a God that forgive us when we do wrong. And Father, we come here, we just ask for forgiveness now. We ask you just forgive us for all the things we did wrong, intentionally, unintentionally. We just pray that we grow to be better Christians, that we grow to, to love one another better, that we have a desire to learn more, to be better, to be the Christians that you ask, you want us to be. We ask you to touch this service today, touch the musicians, touch those, the ushers, the deacons, touch the choir, touch every person that came here today. Ask you to touch the word that come forth, that it touch someone heart, that they will get a better understanding of you. They get a desire to, to have God and Jesus in their life. Ask you to bless our past, to touch of them, Lord, put protection around them, encourage them, can help him to continue to do the wonderful work that he is doing. Lord, we come here asking these things in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. I am so excited to be in the presence of the Lord, to be given another opportunity to praise God today. And I just want to encourage every person in this room. We got one job today. And what is that? And worship God. That is our job today. That's the only reason we came. So if you don't mind, I want you to stand to your feet whenever you feel like it. <laughs> and I want you to praise God with me. Is that all right? These songs are familiar. I know you know them. I want to hear you singing them. And you just going to have a worship party with you and the Lord. You ain't got to worry about your neighbor. You ain't got to worry about me. You ain't got to worry about Pastor Turner. You ain't got to worry about nobody. Worship your God this morning. Oh, why don't you come on in this house? Why don't you come on in this house? Why don't you come on in this house? Come on in this house and praise the Lord. Help me sing it. Why don't you come on in this house? That's your line. Why don't you come on in this house? Why don't you come on in this house? Come on in this house and praise the Lord. Hey, we're going to have a good time. Come on in this house. Hey, we're going to have a good time. Come on in this house. We're going to have a good time. Come on in this house. Come on in this house and praise the Lord. Hey, come on in this. Sorry. Come on in this house. Oh, we're going to have a good time. 
come on in this house. We're going to have a good time. Come on in this house. Come on in this house and praise the Lord. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Since I laid my burdens down. Glory, glory. want y'all to know praising God takes a lot of energy and so when you out there looking at me I need your energy that's why you gotta help me out you gotta help me out hallelujah we thank God for his sovereignty we thank God for his faithfulness. We thank God for giving us another opportunity just to call his name, to be in his presence. We love him so much and we owe him so much. And there's so much that we need to do for him in the earth. Oh, hallelujah. Mm, to God be the glory to God please sing along be the glory to God be the glory for the wonderful things he 
has done to God be all the glory to our the wonderful things, for the undeserved things, for the miraculous things, for the undeserved things, hey. for the unexpected things, for the impossible things. Thank you. 
to God be the glory. Good morning. If we have any visitors, would you please stand? Thank you. On behalf of our pastor, Reverend Edward C. Turner, the New Revelation Missionary Baptist Church, we would like to welcome you. I believe it's Psalms 133 that says, oh, how pleasant it is for us to gather in unity. And we're so glad you decided to unite with us today. If you do not have a church home, please feel free to come down and give Pastor Turner your hand and God your home. But if you do not, please come back again, again, and again. Thank you, and you may be seated. Amen, amen, everyone. Can we please stand for our congregational song, Blessed Assurance. Blessed assurance, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a good thing of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, and this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission. to God. I know you all just sat back down, but it's prayer time. Amen. 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 As you grab your neighbor by the hand, put something good on your heart, something good on your mind, something that God has done for you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. 
Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord. most gracious Father, we humbly come before you this morning, God, thanking you, Lord God, for waking us up this morning, oh God, and allowing us to be here once again, oh God. We thank you that the doors of this church are open for us to come and give back to you, oh God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. We thank you for every person, oh God, that is here, oh God, that is under the sound of my voice, God. We thank you for those that are watching via social media, oh God. And we pray right now, God, that your presence is being felt in this place right now, oh God. We pray that your presence, Father God, are touching the people that are not here but that are watching, oh God. Father, we thank you that your train is filling this temple right now oh God we thank you right now that there's a sweet spirit in this place oh God we thank you that the aroma father God of your spirit begins to touch our nose and our clothes father God and get into our hearts and our minds oh God in the name of Jesus father we thank you father for God, Father God, for just bringing us here, God. We come before you in the name of Jesus, not expecting anything from you, oh God, but just to say thank you, God, because you've been so good to us, oh God. You've been so merciful to us. You've been faithful to us, oh God. We thank you that you are just, God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your grace and your mercies that are new every morning in the name of Jesus, oh God. We thank you right now, Father, that you carry us from day to day, from week to week, from month to month, oh God, and from you year to year, God. We thank you, Lord God, that we have the activity of our limbs, God. We thank you right now in the name of Jesus, Father God, for strength in our bodies, oh God. Strength in our minds in the name of Jesus, oh God. Strength in our hearts in the name of Jesus. Oh, Holy Spirit, we thank you for leading us and guiding us every day to be more like you in the name of Jesus. And Father, forgive us when we've taken your love for granted. Forgive us, oh God, when we've taken the activity of our limbs for granted, oh God. Forgive us, Father God, when we've taken for granted everything that you've given, for, uh, uh, given to us in the name of Jesus, God. And we just thank you right now, God, for loving us in the name of Jesus unconditionally, God. Father, we pray right now in the name of Jesus, Father, for those who are sick in their bodies, oh God. We thank you for healing them. We thank you that you've already healed them. We thank you that the blood never loses its power, God, and that it runs warm in their veins in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you right now when we speak to their bodies. We speak life to them right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for those that are in prison, oh God. We pray for the youth right now in the name of Jesus that are lost and in prison oh God. We pray for those who are in the hospital, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We pray right now in the name of Jesus, Father, for those, Lord God, in the in the psychology ward, oh God, in the name of Jesus, Father. We pray right now that you touch them, deliver them, set them free right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, for every young person, every young woman, every young man, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we cancel the assignment of the enemy over their lives right now in the name of Jesus. We cancel every assignment in the name of Jesus of the enemy of every unborn child right now in the name of Jesus God we thank you that our youth will be great in the name of Jesus oh God we thank you for helping us Father God, us older ones, oh God, us parents, oh God, instilling in our children, Father God, the way that you want them to go, Father, so that they won't go astray in the name of Jesus, oh God. Touch the children right now, God, the young adults that are in college, oh God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Father, surround them with your angels, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Let them know that you are right there in the name of Jesus, oh God. Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus for just your presence being with us, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, continue to to show us your glory, oh God. In the name of Jesus, Father, bless our pastor and his family, oh God. Touch every each and every one of them right now, God. From the crown of their head down to the soles of their feet. In the name of 
Jesus. Any spoken requests or unspoken requests that they have before you, we pray that you grant it right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. Father, in the name of Jesus, there's somebody right here, oh God, that needs you. They're lost, oh God. And we know that it is not your will that any man should perish, but that all shall come to repentance, oh God. And we pray that their soul be saved today in the name of Jesus, oh God. Father, we love you. We bless you. We honor you. We praise you, God. There is none like you. We glorify you, God. You are worthy to be praised in the name of Jesus, oh God. And Father, we thank you, Lord. And we seal this prayer in your son's Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give somebody a hug before you go to your seat.
sheriff in town on his order. I don't know what the other guy used to do, all right? But I come to church every night.
there anybody that can offer a praise for his goodness and his mercy we offer praise hallelujah give this second aggregation a hand hallelujah didn't they bless our hearts let's thank god for our new sheriff on the organ amen amen god bless you tony amen for well, god is truly great and he is greatly isn't he greatly to be praised? God deserves a great praise. Amen. And we honor God for his goodness and his mercy toward us. After we think about what he's done for us, amen, we have to offer him a praise. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed thus far in the worship experience? Amen. We did come here to give God glory and praise and adoration because he is truly worthy to be praised. 
Anybody ever get tired of praising God? I don't want y'all to answer that because I watch some of y'all. Amen. And we just thank him for his goodness. Thank God for our visitors who are sharing with us on the day. Because of your worship, because of your presence in our worship, we are really enjoying ourselves. Amen. We thank God for this time of worship. There's a passage of scripture that I would like to share with you on this morning. If you will, from the history book of the New Testament, that is the book of Acts. That is the history because it teaches us as it bridges a gap between the life of Jesus and the work of the Holy Ghost in the life of the church. Amen. The first chapter. Starting at verse six, it'll be on the screen for those who carry your own executive order. It is Acts, and I'll read from the New International Version, the NIV version. And it says like this, then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the dates or time the father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this. He was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Amen. I want to share with you from this thought a reliable revelation. A reliable revelation. A revelation, you all, is not just a book in the Bible. But a revelation is something that is revealed to us. It's a revealing. And I don't know about you. How many of you know that you're glad that God still reveals himself to us? He shows us who he is by many signs and wonders. And mainly by his word, we know, 80, who God is is so as i begin tanya to think about we're still basking in the glow of the resurrection the resurrection for all of us should be a source of hope because the hope that it brings or that it should bring to us is that we serve a risen savior what a sunday school folk at amen i told y'all already We serve a risen Savior. and So therefore, we walk and we function by faith in the hope that we have that Christ rose from the dead. I said earlier today in Sunday Bible Institute, I can go to other folks' grave and they're still there. But if I were to travel over to Jerusalem and visit the tomb that Jesus is in, Look at your say neighbor and say, neighbor, he's not there. He has risen. And so when Christ rose, that is hope for all of us that we too will rise one day. That if we happen to die in this life, we will die. 
Job said it like this, if a man die, will he live again? Amen. I feel like preaching. Amen. We will die one day. But when I die, I realize that's not the end of the story. That one day I'll rise again. Not only me, but those that gone on before me, I'll see them again. And so therefore, you all, as we're basking in the glow of the resurrection, the Lord put it on my heart to remind us or even to inform us that we have been given a revelation. We have been given a revealing of God's intent for our lives. But I don't know about you, if you can think about it, we're being, things are being revealed to us each and every day. And I don't know about you, I wonder sometimes, Cynthia, how reliable are they? Y'all roll with me for a little bit. Things people are talking about on the news and the world and the economy, certain revealings that are happening. But I wonder, Sister Mitchell, how reliable are they? Amen. We live in a time where people aren't reliable in what they say and what they do. I don't know about you, but I want some reliable things in my life. I wish y'all would roll with me. Some of y'all just want a reliable car. Oh, y'all ain't going to talk to me. Amen. Some of y'all just want a reliable job. Some reliable friends, reliable family member, something that you can trust, something that can get you from point A to point B, somebody you can lean on in the time of trouble, somebody you can cry to when you're all by yourself. I wish I had some people. We want something reliable, something trustworthy. Amen, somebody. And I don't want... I don't know about you, but I don't just want, I don't want to be too selfish. I don't just want something and someone reliable, but I want to be reliable. I don't know about you. I don't know if you want to be reliable in your life. And I found out that in order for me to be reliable, I must have a model of what reliability looks like. I must be informed by reliable intel. The things that come to me, if I'm going to be reliable, if I want to be, I need to know what reliability looks like. And I don't know about you, but yes, I do want those things, but I also want to reciprocate. I wish somebody in the house has me to understand. Reliability. And for me, the Bible is a source of reliability. There are a whole lot of things that we hear, a whole lot of things that we believe. But I believe what the Bible tells me. The Bible says that heaven and earth will pass away. But my word will stand forever. The Bible says the grass wither, the flower fadeth. I wish I had somebody. But the word of God will never fade. The Bible teaches me that God is not a man that he should lie, uh, nor the son of man that he should repent. The Bible teaches me the God that I serve, he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. I wish somebody can pray with me. Amen. That shares to me that I serve a God and I have a book that I can rely on. Even I, when I can't rely on people, even when I can't rely on myself, that I have something that I can rely on. Many people try to discredit the Bible's reliability. They try to discredit the writings of the Bible. But I just made it up in my mind, Deacon Ken, I'm like Joshua. As for me and my house. I'm going to serve the Lord. Amen. And so therefore, we need as people something that will satisfy our uneasy soul. We hear so much. And thank God, Sister Mitchell, I heard you this morning. I hear so many things during the week. And when we show up on Sunday, I need to hear a prayer. I need to hear a song. 
I need to hear a word that will, watch this, recharge my faith. Watch this, renew my hope. Because I'm looking at things and situations that seem hopeless. I look at things and people that I really can't have faith in. But thank God for a reliable revelation. And when I began to look at this particular passage of scripture, it gave me hope for my soul. I know most people don't want to hear this. Most people want to hear self-help messages. Most people want to hear messages that's going to give them three or five steps to teach them how to live, save their money. You can go anywhere else to hear that. Amen. But I want to give you some reassurance for your soul. Amen, somebody. This is what the Bible teaches us. It gives us reassurance for our soul. And I know people don't like to talk about heaven and hell no more. Or Jesus is coming back. That's gotten far away from us. But I'm glad that God put it in my spirit to remind us that one day Jesus is coming back. Amen, somebody. So when I thought about this idea of a reliable revelation, it led me, Sister Penella, right here to the book of Acts. And this thought began to well up in my spirit, in my soul, that God wants to remind his people to learn how to trust his process. Amen, somebody. I know we quote it and we like it, but the Bible clearly says in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, y'all going to quote it with me. Watch this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own and in all your ways. Acknowledge him and go, what are you going to do? Y'all know the scripture. Now you got to learn how to trust the scripture. We have to learn how to trust the process. And what God does so the Geraldine Wilson, he reveals his plan for humanity. Preach Turner. He reveals his process, his plan to his creation through his word. The word is a revelation. I believe a lot of things. I believe what my big mama said. I believe what my mama said. I believe some things my daddy said. I believe something about the laws of nature. I believe a whole lot of things, but I still believe in the word of God. I trust his plan. It's by faith that I believe his word. It's something in my heart, you all, that causes me to believe in a man that I can't see. <laughs> It's by faith in my heart that causes me to believe that God can make a way out of no way. It's by faith that God can heal a broken heart. It's by faith that God can regulate a confused mind, even though I'm in a confused situation. Is there anybody in the house that still believes God by faith? I don't know how he's going to do it or when he's going to do it. But I just trust his word. So he reveals to us his plan through his word. Now watch this. After the resurrection, I'm almost done. Jesus spent 40 days on this earth. Go on and read the first couple of verses in Acts, this famed chapter. 40 days with his disciples on his earth. He was seen by many people. That's significant to our faith. And I hope. Because he was seen by people once he rose from the grave. He spent 40 days on earth teaching continuously. And when there's teaching, there should always be questions. Questions the disciples, his followers, were asking him about the things in which he was teaching. There was an anticipation, watch this, Brother Roosevelt Glenn because of the resurrection about restoration. Most of us in here, we want and we have an anticipation about being restored, whether it's in our finances, in our health, in our relationships. We have an anticipation about restoration. And their anticipation, Sister Hortense, for restoration, if you read the text, they said, now, after Jesus had been with them teaching, 
Brother Tony, he said, they said, okay, in verse number six, I just read for, to what they said. They said, watch this. They gathered around him. They asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to do what? Restore the kingdom of Israel. Because they had been under Roman oppression. After they had went into captivity years and years ago. They said, now are you going to restore the kingdom of Israel? We're tired of being under Roman oppression. Are you going to now position us to be the world power? We believe you. The reason we will believe you, because we know you rose from the dead. We believe you. The resurrection gives us hope. Y'all roll with me. Stay with me. Amen. So there's an anticipation about restoration because of the resurrection. They said, are you now going to restore us? And I'm wondering how many people in the house are waiting for restoration, waiting to re be restored in our finances. The resurrection gives you hope. But look at what Jesus says. Sometimes our anticipation rests in the wrong restoration. Oh, I wish y'all missed what I'm saying. We anticipate the wrong thing. Look at what Jesus said. He said, wait a minute, y'all. Y'all doing too much now. He said in verse 7, it's not for you to know the times or the dates the Father has set by his own authority. Throughout every generation, people want to know, even every days of our life, Lord, I'm serving you because of what I want you to do for me. Because I want you to heal my body. I want you to restore my relationship. Guess what? You don't need the Lord to restore your relationship. Just learn how to talk to folks. Just learn how to love people. I wish somebody understand. You don't need the Lord to restore your finances. Just learn some financial accountability. Oh, I wish y'all don't want to hear this. Amen. Sometimes we anticipate the wrong thing. We want God to do some stuff that we can do on our own. Amen. Sometimes we, we anticipate the wrong thing. Learn how to love each other. You can restore your relationships. Learn not to want to be the one that's right all the time. Oh, I'm talking to somebody in the house. Learn not to let your ego drive you. It's all right to be humble. It's all right to concede. It's all right to compromise. I wish somebody understand. It's all right not to see things eye to eye. Learn how to disagree without being disagreeable. Oh, I wish somebody understand. Some things, he said it's not for me. Especially with this thing y'all talking about. God is going to do what he's going to do in his time. Y'all, his people. Amen, somebody. He said, I'm going I'm to take care of y'all. He said, I, I'm not going to touch that. Even though I'm God's son, even though y'all saw me resurrect, res, raised from the dead. That's why, watch this. you got to be very careful how people push you up. Y'all roll with me for a little while. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That was a text he just gave me. Amen. Even though you have a position of power, don't think you have to answer every question. Because some people want to set you up for failure. Learn how to say, I don't know, to some stuff. Even if you know, just say, I don't know. Because you know how, never know how people are testing you. Trying to try you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for that word. Jesus said, I don't know. But he uses this conjunction. Verse 7, he says, I don't know in essence. But then, Sister Wilson, he said, but one thing I do know. But you will receive, Lord have mercy, power. Amen. Some of y'all roll with me. I feel like preaching. See, they were hoping for a glorious earthly kingdom free from Roman rule. All of us hope for something. But is our hope reasonable or reliable? Y'all roll with me. Amen. Y'all don't roll with me. Let me bring it down y'all's street. Y'all hope last week. That's why y'all played the lottery. <laughs> y'all hope y'all number would fall. Amen. How y'all don't want to roll with me? Amen. All of us hope for something. 
Amen, somebody. But is what you're hoping for reasonable and reliable? And there are times in our life, Dick and Danny, we need someone to help redirect our desires, y'all wrote with me, from the physical to the spiritual. Oh, I wish somebody understood. Because so many of us are focused on the physical. They wanted the restoration of Israel. He said, Noah, it's not about that. All of us need somebody in our watch this life that will redirect our desires. Because most of our desires are on physical things. Things that we think we need. Amen. But what God does, minister and training Aaron, he, Jesus redirects their desire from the physical need. Oh, hallelujah. To the spiritual need. Preach Turner. He reminds them, uh, Sister Mitchell, about their calling to be spirit-filled witnesses. Oh, hallelujah in the house. Watch this. He said, first of all, what needs to happen is a spiritual revolution needs to take place in your heart and in your mind. See, most of us are so focused on the tangible, physical things in life. The Lord has said, I'm trying to shift your paradigm. I'm trying to change your focus from the physical to the spiritual. Because if you get the spirit right, then you'll be blessed with the physical things. That's why the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these other things shall be added unto you. If you get your spirit right, then you can get the physical right. I wish I had some witnesses in the house. That's why we need people to help us shift. Redirect our desires. Many of us are anticipating physical change. But what if the focus should be spiritual change? Lord have mercy. Most of us are looking for our physical situations to change. But I told you it's by faith. By the spiritual things of God. I reminded them in Ephesians 1 and 3. It said thanks be unto God who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. Oh Lord have mercy. See when you got peace. Hallelujah in your When you have joy. When you have self-control, when you have patience, when you have long-suffering, I wish somebody understand. See, those are the fruits of the Spirit. When I got my spirit man right, then I place myself in a position to get my natural man right. And everything I need, God will just have me to walk into it. I wish somebody understand. I won't have to pray about it. Guess what? I'll just walk by faith. And the Bible said the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And if I just walk, I'll walk into my healing. I'll walk into my deliverance. I'll walk into my money. I'll walk into my breakthrough. Because I'm just walking in the path that God has destined for my life. If I get the spirit right. I don't have to worry. Too many of us, this is a word for somebody. You've been praying about the physical too long. The Bible says in uh, 3 John, the second verse, it says, I pray that you prosper and be in good health. Even, watch this, as your soul prosper. Watch this. As your soul prosper, as your spirit prosper, you ain't got to worry about the physical stuff because God said if you just walk by faith and not by sight I will allow you to enter into the promised lands of your life. Glory to God in this house. So he tries to shift the focus from the physical to the spiritual. He said, I can't tell you about what you're concerned about. He said, but one thing I can tell you. He said, this is God's plan for your life. And I don't know about you, but I trust God's plan. There's a whole lot of things that I had tried to plan for myself. That say there is a way that seemeth right to a man. But the end thereof is destruction. But do you trust God's plan for your life? And thank God he gave me a map. Watch this. In order for me to read the map in order to trust his plan. He said, this is my plan. 
He said, I don't know about what God is going to do in the natural. He said, but I know what should happen with you in the spiritual. He said, but you shall receive power. And is there anybody in the house glad about it? Even when things in the physical, they are not going right. But thank God, Rosalie Glenn, that I got the power to walk in the middle of confusion. I can walk through the valley of the shadow of death, but I will fear no evil because God is with me. Is there anybody in the house that know that I got power? I don't know about you. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I didn't been through some stuff. And I don't know why I'm still here. I don't know why I'm still in my right mind. But I'm so glad that I had the power. Not yet, not Tony. Not yet, Tony. That I got the power of God in my life. Anybody know you got the power of God? Not by might. Not by power. But he said it's by my spirit, says the Lord. And I'm so glad that I had the power of the Holy Ghost. See, y'all don't understand that I would not be here if it had not been for the Lord on my side. Is there anybody in the house that's glad you got power? He said, you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And maybe that's why some people, they look so defeated. They look so depressed because when you got power, you look strong. Strong. You act strong. You walk strong. You talk strong. Look at your neighbor. Say neighbor. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that I have power. All because I got the Holy Ghost. Anybody know you got the Holy Ghost? See, the coming of the kingdom was closely related to the coming of the Holy Ghost. I told you y'all, the physical will come when you got the spiritual right. The Holy Ghost, say yes, will empower you. It will give you the courage. That's why Paul said, it's not by power, it's not by might. Then he said to Timothy, that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power but of love and a sound mind look at your neighbor say neighbor I'm so glad that I have a reliable revelation because I got power from the Holy Ghost not only do I have power but he gave me purpose say yes I don't just have power to sit on my power I got power to carry out my purpose. My purpose is to be a witness. He said to be my witnesses at home, outside of the home, in the city, in the state, all across these United States. And Sister Mitchell, I'm so glad that the Lord blessed me to have power. Because everywhere I go, I don't, I've been on the East Coast. I've been on the West Coast. I've been in the Southwest. I've been in the south uh, and Andrea uh, everywhere I go uh, I take my power uh, all because uh, I'm a witness uh, for the Lord uh, even if I go to Jamaica uh, even if I go to Putacana uh, yeah uh, I take my power uh, if I go to Canada uh, Niagara Falls uh, I take my power uh, I'm a witness uh, that old song said it who will be a witness for the Lord that's my purpose that's my plan I have power to be a witness for the Lord not only do I have power do I have purpose I'm through now y'all then I have a promise ain't God alright yes he is I have a 
promise. <gasps> Can't y'all see them? <gasps> they were looking <gasps> up into the sky. <gasps> Those were the last words <gasps> that Jesus spoke <gasps> before he left this earth. <gasps> you got power. <gasps> you got purpose. <gasps> but then <gasps> the angels <gasps> that were standing by them, <gasps> they said, why are you looking? <gasps> why are you gazing? <gasps> up in the air the same way you see him leave he's coming back just like that look at your neighbor say neighbor I got a promise that one of these days he's coming back ain't he alright the bible said that he left in the cloud y'all know that a cloud represented the glory of God. Y'all remember in the Old Testament the glory cloud led them by day and the fire by night. A cloud, y'all, represented the glory of God. And we have a promise that Jesus, he left in glory. Ain't he alright? But he's coming back in glory. Do you believe he's coming back? Well, stop looking and start witnessing. Ain't God all right? We got too many people standing around just looking. But if you believe he's coming back, you ought to be a witness for the Lord. Like grandmama and them said, he's coming back and don't let him catch you with your work undone ain't he all right i don't want to just keep on looking but i want to start witnessing ain't god all right the bible says in first thessalonians chapter number four verse 13 through 18 it said brothers and sisters we do not want you to be uninformed about those who are asleep so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope ain't God all right for we believe that Jesus he died and rose again and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him ain't God all right according to the Lord's word we tell you that we who are still alive who are left until the coming of the Lord will certainly not proceed those who have fallen asleep ain't God all right for the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command with the voice of the archangels with the trump call of God and the dead in Christ will rise they will rise first thank God alright and after that we who are alive and remain will be caught up caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so we we forever be with the Lord ain't God all right yes he is say yeah say yes so therefore encourage one another with these words ain't God all right Yes, he is. That old song said it like this. A charge to keep our have. A God to glorify. Or never dying. So to save and fit it 
for the sky to serve this present age. My calling to fulfill, oh, may it all, my powers engage to do my master's will. I don't know about you, but I want to do the will of the Father. I want to be a witness for the Lord. Ain't God all right? Yeah, ain't he all right? Cause one of these days, he's coming back. Yeah, yes he is for his church without a spot or a wrinkle. And I want to be caught up, caught up. I want to hear the Lord say, well done, well done. Well done, well done, my good and faithful servant. Come on up a little bit high. Anybody want to go high? Him the Lord say yeah. Ah, yeah. Ah, yeah. Ah. Ain't he all right? Slap your neighbor through y'all. A high five. Say, neighbor, don't listen to unreliable sources. But I have a reliable revelation. He's coming back. Yeah. He's coming back. He's coming back. He's coming back. I just want to be ready. I just want to be ready. Hallelujah. To the Lamb of God. You all guys plan. We have power. We have a purpose, but we also have a promise. Hallelujah. 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 I got a promise. Hallelujah. He's coming back. He's coming back. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now for a reliable revelation. Thank you for revealing to us that you're coming back, oh God. Father, please forgive us if we have not trusted your plan. We focus on the physical and not the spiritual. Thank you for redirecting our desires to be mindful if we get the spirit right, the natural things will follow. But thank you, Father, for the power we have. Thank you for our purpose. Thank you for our promise. Father, we don't know when. Many people have tried to predict when you're coming back. We don't know when you're coming back, but we just want to be ready. Father, we pray that we ready our hearts and our minds to be the witnesses wherever we go, by word or by deed, by the way we live. You said men will know that you're my disciples because you love the brethren. We pray, oh God, that we learn how to love ourselves through your word so that we can love others adequately. Thank you for forgiveness, oh God. 
Father, we pray if there's anyone under the sound of my voice, they've been lied to so much. Sometimes it's difficult for them to trust. But we pray for a supernatural anointing, oh God, that they will trust your plan. Your word is true. We pray our life is a reflection, an example to them. Those who are the sound of my voice and that don't have a church home, we pray that you touch their heart, that they come into fellowship with you. And they'll understand that your revelation is reliable. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank God for those of you who tuned in with us on this morning. We pray something was said to challenge you to change, to redirect your desires, and not just focus on the physical needs, but your spiritual needs. And I declare you have a testimony. When you put God first, all you have to do is walk, and you will walk into everything that you need. And you'll give God glory because your spirit is right. And when your spirit is right, your finances will get right. Your relationships will get right. You'll learn how to love. You won't walk in brokenness or unforgiveness. If you desire to be a disciple of this church, you can contact this church. The phone numbers will be highlighted. You can email us, send us a Facebook message. We just want you to be saved. Thank God for those of you who dub us as your Facebook church. Thank God those of you who send your gifts to us. We want you to know that all those that are on our prayer list, we're praying for you. We're praying for all those that will be highlighted on our prayer list. Sister Annie Terry, uh, we're praying for you. Sister Rakia, we are praying for you. God bless you. Brother Allen, we are praying for you. And all of those, I wanted to call those out for a specific reason. We want you to know that we're praying for you. Stay encouraged and your church family loves you. And remember as you go through this week, come to one of our midweek services, 11 o'clock on Tuesday and 6.30 on Wednesday. And as you go through this week, don't let the day make the difference in you, but you make the difference in the day. Put your hands together. Those of us in the house, if we can stand on our feet, there may be somebody in this house where the Lord is calling you, saying this is.